we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Hello, welcome to the Narrowest Christ for All Nations. We give glory to God Almighty for all His goodness, His care, His mercy, and His love that He has showered upon us. We are grateful for helping us to see another month. It's my prayer that these words that we're going to hear will bring peace, stability, and energy to our spiritual and physical health in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Spirit of the Lord, we ask, refire us again. A lot of people are looking back. But he that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is no longer fit for the kingdom of God. Lord, refine us. Cast us into your refining fire. And consume everything that is not yours from our lives. So that we can be strong. We soak ourselves into the blood of Jesus. May your fire give birth to us again. Refine us, O Father. Spirit of the Lord, we ask that you speak to us. Give us understanding hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we're talking about the cost of discipleship. What is the cost of discipleship? I remember some time ago I talked about the call to discipleship. What is the cost of discipleship? Discipleship is simply the act of a disciple following jesus christ a disciple is a follower of jesus christ jesus christ did not just come to save us to give us eternal life but he also come to make us his followers so that we can represent him when he lives that is why he called 12 to himself that they might be with him and after that they would be sent by him to go and spread the gospel of salvation to the whole world. And that is how this gospel came to us. The Great Commission is that we should go and make disciples of all nations. So even we who are followers of Jesus Christ, we are not just following because he is leading us to eternal place of rest, but because but also, we have to bring others to Him. But there is a cost. There is a cost. Salvation is free, but following Jesus Christ is not free. There is a cost of discipleship. I want to ask you, if you are a believer and you come across this message, how did you believe? The foundation of your faith has a lot to do with Everything you're going to lay on it. If the foundation is not solid enough, there could be probability of the whole thing you were building to crash. A lot of people's faith have crashed because they did not lay a good foundation. Let us look at the test for today. Luke chapter 14, 25 to 35. And there went great multitude with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So Jesus Christ saw a multitude of people following him. Many people, they were following him. And he turned and said, listen, I guess some of you are following me, but you don't know the cost of following me. And I want to tell you the bitter truth. This is the bitter truth. If you must follow me, you must be ready to lose your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, and even your own self you must hate yourself you must be ready to hate yourself because there are times that decisions are going to come up in all in your life and you will be demanded 
to choose between following me or rejecting me. So before you come to that point, before you come to meet with situations that we demand you choosing between following me or following your mother or obeying your sister or father or mother, you have to decide right now, and this is the truth, if you cannot make up your mind after hearing this truth that a time is coming when you will be made to choose a time of decisions will come when you will be made to decide either to save your life or to continue to follow jesus christ that time will definitely come jesus christ says the things that cause men to fall must surely come temptation must surely come they will definitely come so this is a time of decision you are following me, a multitude. Let me tell you, Jesus is not interested in the multitudes. If not, he would have called thousands of people to be his disciples, but he chose only 12 to be with him. Just 12. 12 to be with him. Jesus is not interested in churches that are filled to the brim. He is interested in the few that are ready to follow him. He said, many are called, but few are chosen. He said, wherever two or three are gathered, not wherever multitudes are gathered in my name. No, wherever two or three are gathered in my name. Jesus Christ is not interested in the multitude who don't love him. He is interested in the few that follow him. Many are called, but few are chosen. He saw the multitude following him. Oh, I wish all the multitude were ready to follow to the end. But the truth is that few are chosen. Why few? Because only few will see the cost and follow. Today, we have a form of Christianity that a preacher comes on the pulpit and wants to tell the people to follow Jesus Christ. And then he tells them all the, about all the miracles, all the good things of life how jesus christ is powerful to save he tells them how god is powerful how he's able to solve all your problems how he's able to heal all manner of sicknesses and then he tells them if you give your life to jesus christ all your problems are going to be over and then the next thing is if you want to give your life to jesus christ please come forward that is a foundation a lot of people build their christian faith that is wrong why is it wrong let's go back to the bible jesus christ saw multitude following him let me tell you there is nothing wrong for multitude to follow jesus christ but jesus christ looked straight into the eyes of these people and he saw that many of them were following him because of the signs and wonders many of them were following him because he fed multitudes with bread many were following him because they heard that jesus christ turned water to wine Many were following him because they wanted him to be their leader, to lead them out of the captivity of the Roman Empire. So Jesus Christ looked directly into their face and told them these very words. He said, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also he cannot be my disciple what have you hated for the sake of following jesus christ are you a true disciple or you are a superficial disciple are you a soldier of jesus christ on what foundation did you build your faith on what foundation did you build your christian faith let me tell you when some of us receive jesus christ we were ready to die and to today we continue to build on their faith we continue to build on that christian faith on that same foundation we believed in life and death we were told that in course of giving your life to jesus christ things could happen that can possibly take away your life will you still believe will you still follow i did not come to jesus christ because i was sick and i needed healing i came 
because I wanted to follow. It was a time in my life I needed to surrender to Him. And I said, today is a day I want to give my life to Christ. I gave my life to Christ very, at a very early age as a child. But year 2000, I had to make up my mind again. After looking back, after becoming cold, there was a time there was a crusade and they called for auto call. The auto call was so strong and powerful. I made up my mind and I said, the moment this man of God says, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, come forward. I am going to go forward. And I was the first person that went forward. I remember in that crusade, I danced so hard that people were looking at me. I said, today is a day of my salvation. I'm not going to look back again. I made up my mind that I was going to follow. It was my own decision to follow. I was never tricked to follow Jesus Christ. I did not follow because of signs and wonders. I did not follow because he would make me rich. As a matter of fact, till today, I say it, I was born poor. I am not rich yet. And I'm ready to die poor if God wants me to die poor. And even if he gives me millions in this world, I am ever ready to give them to the poor because that is what I have believed. That naked we came naked we will leave but i don't want to go empty-handed before i leave i am sending everything ahead of me because we have a kingdom we have a kingdom we have a home we are just passing through many of us have been deceived to believe that we must make a name here there is no name to make here i don't have many followers i don't have many people that listen to me but does that affect my reward in heaven if I carry out the assignment faithfully? No. I just need to preach the truth. I just need to keep following. I just need to keep trying to become more of Jesus Christ. And I say, keep looking at him, the author and finisher of my faith. I know I have a reward in heaven. There are things people do to get followers. I can't do those things. I just need to speak the truth and let those who have resolved in their heart, those who have counted the cost of discipleship, those who are ready to lose their lives for the gospel's sake, those who are ready to lay down their lives on the cross of Calvary and carry their cross to the end and be hung on the cross until I see those people. I am not ready to settle down and begin to manipulate the minds of people, manipulate people to profess their faith. When I know the faith is not built on Jesus Christ, but on the things that Jesus Christ can offer. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. We must seek the kingdom. And because of seeking the kingdom, there are times we will be asked to give up our lives. There are times we will be asked situations that warrant us to give up everything we have. I remember I have been tested. I know since I set up my charity organization, since 2017, we've, we struggle with a lot of funds. We struggle. The ministry is not enough. The money I make is not enough. We struggle a lot of times. And I, I know, I have been approached, oh, we will give you so, so much money, but it is from so, so, so accounts. We, we just want to use your account charity organizations account to push some money into the country and we will give you so so number of percentage i said no i was born poor and i am not ready to compromise the standard of jesus christ if god cannot look at it it's 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 craziness you want to help people i you want to help and you know the source of this money is not good you know this money is from the government's account and they want to take some percentage and you want to accept it to give do you, can good come out of evil good can never come out of evil that is the truth you know if if the source is good they will not seek for your account. If you want to donate money from the government's account, let it be very plain. I cannot be a part of the corruption that is ongoing, that is destroying millions of people and killing a lot of people.
of people today. Today, a lot of people cannot feed well. A lot of people can't take care of themselves. And we have children who are prostituting themselves because of the hardship in the nation. I can never be a part of it. Even if ministers of God, all of them in the world, use that means to get money, to build mansions, I tell you, I will never be a part of it. I will never. We have a kingdom. We have a kingdom. You could accept those money and lose your life the next day. We have a kingdom. And until we are ready to follow that kingdom, whether in life or in death, we are not qualified. How are you following? How are you following? On what did you build your faith? On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other grounds are sinking sand. Did you stand on the solid rock? Is your faith beat on Jesus Christ? Are you standing upon the rock? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, Upon this rock will I beat my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Are you upon that solid rock? Or your faith is beat upon miracles? May the Lord God Almighty help us. Let's continue with the passage. Verse 27. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intended to build a tower, sit there not down first and count the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? And less happily, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king? Sit there not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000 or else why the other is yet a great way off he said an abbasage and desired conditions of peace so likewise whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he had he cannot be my disciple Salt is good, but if the salt have lost its savour, where which shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet, nor yet for the dog heel. But men cast it out. He that had ears to hear, let him hear. Praise the Lord. A lot of us have built our faith on things that cannot hold waters. A lot of us have beat our faith on the works of oppression and not on Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith. On whom did you build your faith? A lot of us came to Christ because we were told that the man of God is very powerful. A lot of us came to believe because we were told that in that church, they share food. They could give you money to establish business. A lot of us came to believe because we saw Christians sharing tracks. And we were told that as soon as you get here, as soon as you become a member of our church, everything is going to be well. Look at what Jesus Christ said. If you want to build, won't you sit down first? Do some mathematics. Calculate how much do I have? If I lay the foundation of a story building, will I be able to finish it? Because if you start and your resources get exhausted, if you are not able to finish it, people are going to laugh at you. I tell you the truth. Before you follow Jesus Christ, do you, do you count the cost? If you do not count the cost, it's time you go back to your foundation. It's time... You go back and count the cost. Because there is danger. Let me tell you. Luke chapter 9, 58 to 62. Jesus Christ told 
they would be disciples. Let me read. And Jesus said unto them, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man had not where to lay his head. And he said unto to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but go down and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go be them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man have put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. There is the cost of discipleship. Discipleship will cost you everything. To follow Jesus Christ is costly. Because there are times you are asked to leave everything. He said, except you are ready to let everything go. You cannot be my disciple. You cannot, verse 33 of Luke 14. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he had, he cannot be my disciple. You must forsake everything you have. It is not saying you should throw everything away, but it's saying that you have to put Christ first to the point that if Jesus Christ says, Give me everything you have. You will be very willing and happy to give them to him. There is a cost of discipleship. Has Christianity cost you anything? Has your faith cost you anything? If it doesn't cost you, I tell you the truth. It will cost you a lot. If not everything, it could cost you your life. There are people who have died. If Jesus Christ says, follow me, he is not telling you to follow him because there is sugar and butter and bread. No. He's telling you that, listen, I know there are lots of things for you to gain, but you are going to lose a lot too. But I tell you, I am going to supply all your needs according to my riches in glory. He will supply everything you need. He will protect you. But there are times he will not protect you. Because in his will for you, there is a greater glory for you ahead. People have been killed. People have been slaughtered for their faith. People have been stripped of everything. And the Lord says, let go. I have another reward for you. I want you to look at the scripture very well. The cost of discipleship is what we're talking about today. If you do not cost it, if you do not look at the cost, there could be danger ahead. Remember what Jesus Christ said in the text we read. Let's go back to it. He said, verse 31, salt is good. But if the salt have lost his savour, wherewith shall it be seized? Let me explain. If you come to believe in Jesus Christ, you become the salt of the world. You become salt to the earth. When you come to believe, you become light to the world. But as salt, if you fall, and you no longer have that savour, that sweetness, that saltiness. You become useless. Remember, he's talking about the cost of discipleship. If you do not count the cost and you jump into it, and then you backslide and lose your saltiness, he is saying that you will become worthless. Matthew chapter 13 verse 21 following jesus christ talks about the parable of the sower let's read yet had he not root in himself 
but endure it for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. The one that received the seeds on a stony ground had no root in himself. The root, the seeds sprang up so quickly, but they only endured for a while. Why is it that soldiers are trained for a long time? Why is it that soldiers are passed through a lot of rigorous training? Why? Because they know that the battlefield is not sweet. They could meet with danger. They will meet with a lot of harsh conditions. If they are not well trained, they will give up. And their enemies will overcome them. You are a soldier of Jesus Christ. Let's go back to the passage again. He, verse 22, he that also received the seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world, remember what Jesus Christ said, if you cannot give up everything you have, you cannot follow him. The care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches shook the world and he becometh unfruitful. You see it. But he that receiveth, received the seed into the good ground, is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. He that heareth the word and understandeth it. You have to understand it. You have to sit down and count the cost of Christianity and count the cost of discipleship. If I follow how will I stand at the time of trial? He that understandeth it, you have to understand the danger in it. Before you can bear fruit, you have to understand. Understand, it is time to go back to the foundation of our faith. When first did you receive the word? When did you receive the word? Let's look at the interpretation. Matthew 13, 22 to 23. But he that received the seed into stony place, places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receive it. This is what happens. <laughs> A lot of people hearing the gospel, they are so happy because they are not told the truth. Some of us repented in tears, in tears. Some of us repented in tears because we had things to lose and we were ready to give them up. Today, people are met on the street. They meet people on the street and ask them, do you know that Jesus loves you? And they say, yes. Do you know that God has a better plan for you? Yes. Are you seeing the death, the worst in the world? Yes. Do you know that there is a paradise prepared for everyone? The condition is that you have to confess Jesus Christ with your mouth. You have to believe in your heart and confess it with your mouth. And then you are saved. This is how a lot of people say this prayer after the man of God. And they are declared saved, born again. And they say, congratulations, you are born again. Is that how soldiers are recruited? Is that how nations recruit soldiers? Is that how? <sighs> Look at verse 22. Um, 21. Yet he had not root in himself, but endure it for a while. For when tribulation or persecution, or persecution of rise it because of the word by and by he is offended he becomes offended look at what Paul said seeing the danger this is what Paul practiced and I first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 4 and 5 
and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of god paul did not go to these people with eloquence he did not confuse them by telling them the moment you give your life to christ everything is going to be okay he told them the truth do you know why the believers of old we are so tough many of them were sawn into two some of them were put inside a boiling oil a drum of oil they were cooked and some of them did not even die some of them were cast in deserts in the deserts Remember, John, in the desert, a lot of people were killed for their faith. Many thrown to beasts, lions, to birds. Many were destroyed. Many were drowned. And they were still ready to hold on to what they believed. How did you believe? How did you come to believe? Why is it that you can't stand? There is a hymn writer that says, Will your anchor hold? Will your anchor hold? In the face of trial. When the billows roll, will your anchor hold? If you did not come to believe in Jesus Christ, while making up your mind for the best, for the worst, whether in life or in death, I tell you the truth. If you want to finish well, if you want to stand strong, you have to go back to the foundation and strengthen it. You have to rebuild your foundation. Why is it that marriages of old were doing well? Look at the vows they were making. I, Hosanna, take you as my wife in sickness and in health in poverty and in riches for better for worse till death do us apart look at the vows so we the it the vow has the strongest terms in sickness and in health nothing is still doing us apart nothing is separating us there are some of us don't believe in in divorce we don't me i don't believe in divorce of any kind even in adultery when there is true repentance go on with your wife go on with your husband marriage is for a lifetime i don't believe in getting married again when your spouse is still alive except on the ground of adultery i don't believe that because you, your dreams are no longer fit together if you are tired and you are pulling out please remain single for the rest of your life it's not biblical. God said he hates divorce. God hates divorce. But why is it that a lot of people are divorcing today? Even among Christians and pastors and bishops. <laughs> uh, what is the foundation of the marriage? How was the foundation laid? How was it laid? I was watching a video of a, a young man and a lady getting married 
And the man of God was saying, in sickness and in health. The lady said, in health and in health. For better, for worse. The lady said, for better, for best. <laughs> so if things get worse, you go on your own. I know what I used to do. And I still do it today. When I see women who stand fervently by their husbands, I appreciate them. Last month, a woman, my former church member, lost her husband. And I appreciated her. I said, thank you very much for setting an example for this young generation. Who we'll give up on their marriage when there is sickness. When there is sickness and the man can't satisfy them, can't sleep with them, they start cheating. When there is problem, they start misbehaving. They don't take care of the man anymore. Marriage is in sickness and in health. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. The death do us apart. So all those young people, uh, what you are entering is a business contract. Well, if you can no longer bring your own quota because of sickness, then a business close. But that's not what marriage is. There are some animals that are faithful for the rest of their lives. They don't have any other partner. They are so faithful. But humans... Many of us have become so unfaithful. So men, when their wives get pregnant and they can no longer sleep with their wives, they look outside. When their wives travel or they are separated by distance, they look outside. And they can justify it. They have reasons to justify it. Those who don't understand marriage should go into marriage because it causes a lot of confusion for the society. The society is in a mess today because of divorce. Divorce is a weapon the devil is using. Let's come back to the message of today. How are we to live as believers? Let us look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3, 4, and then 11 to 13. Thou therefore endure hardness, hardship, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had enlisted, who had chosen him to be a soldier. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. As his good soldier of Jesus Christ, you cannot entangle yourself with the things of this world. You are a soldier of Jesus Christ. You have been enlisted as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Detach yourself from the things of this world. Detach yourself. Detach yourself. If you want to make it, detach yourself. The kingdom will cost you everything. Are you facing any challenge right now? Are you facing any trouble right now? Don't look back. God is faithful. The one who has begun this great work, this good work, will bring it to a glorious end. I tell you the truth. Are you faithful? On what foundation did you build your Christian faith? Did you build it on prosperity gospel? Did you build it on a powerful man of God? Was it because of the eloquence of the preacher you gave your life to Christ? If you did, go back to the drawing board. 
Go back to the basics. Go back to your foundation. And set a new foundation for your faith. Because trials will definitely come. And when they come, I tell you the truth. If your faith is not strong, everything will collapse. People will laugh at you. They will say, look at this one that says he's the salt of the earth. Look at this one who used to preach Jesus Christ. Look at him he has become as one of us. May that not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Before I round off, I want to tell you that there are mansions in heaven. We are not just laboring for nothing. We are laboring because there is a crown. We are not just sending our treasures to heaven to keep. We have a reward. We know this world will soon come to an end. Even today, I heard from the Holy Spirit clearly, told me some things, told me some things. He told me that he is near. But what he told me, he said, it is for my own consumption. The one thing I must tell you, he is near. We shall not go and leave this place. Those of us who are watchful, we shall soon leave. Don't be fooled. Christianity is costly. Discipleship is costly. Salvation is free. We didn't pay for it, but having received salvation, having been admitted into the kingdom, live in a world that is ruled by the prince of the darkness of this world, he is a ruler of the kingdom of this dark world. He is going to fight us and he is fighting us and we must stand to the end because he will come for the sick of the word that we have received. He will definitely come for the word. Let us pray. We put our trust in you, O Lord. Help us to stand to the end. I pray for you that the Lord will help your faith to stand. May nothing pull you from the narrow path. May nothing take you away. I pray for you that the power of the Lord will see you through. That temptations that are beyond your faith will not come to you. The ones you are already facing, I pray for you. That the Lord God Almighty will help you to overcome them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for as many who have listened to these words. That their faith will never run dry. Increase their faith, O God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, bless those who have been supporting this ministry, those who have been supporting our charity organization. Father, I release your blessings upon their lives. Cover you with the blood of Jesus. Pray for you that the Lord God Almighty will see you through. No power of hell will take you from his kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord that has called you into this kingdom, into his marvelous kingdom, the one that translated you, may that one keep you in his kingdom. Satan, lose your grip from these ones. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may the blessings of the Lord be upon your life. Whatsoever thing you need to finish this race well, receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for financial breakthrough upon your life. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for, that, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please share this video with someone. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you and God bless you for being a part of this ministry and for supporting us. Please continue to support us. And the good Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. See you next time. God bless you. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.